class, we're going to be learning about simple integration. In specific, the limit as x approaches infinity to help us estimate the area under the curve. The Excuse me, do you need help? Integration is the antiderivative of a function. Do you need assistance with your work? There are many methods for Hello? Hello, classmate. The All right, so assuming that you need assistance, all you have to do is just take the integral of this, and then you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna want to plug in the bounds of x just like it is right here. By using the power rule, which is nx to the n minus 1, we can easily solve this derivative. First, we multiply x by 2 because n equals 2. Then all we have to do is subtract 1 from the power, which means our answer is just 2x. So that's all you have to do. Oh my god! My name is Maddie Parr and welcome to the transcript. This week the transcript is going to be a little different due to political climate surrounding the embedded honors. We will be doing a special report on issues and conflicts that have arisen from this change in the math curriculum. Over the past several years, discussions on the topic of the embedded honors program at NHS have led to tensions between students, parents, faculty and administration. Embedded honors has been implemented in our school system for years now, but recently its efficacy has been called into question. Originally put in place to help bridge the gap between honors and non-honors students, Embedded Honors has, in one way or another, affected almost every student in our school system. So this week, we sat down with some teachers and asked them about their experience with the program. So I've been in the department for 15 years, and the entire time that I've been here, um, the discussion of heterogeneous versus homogeneous groupings in classrooms has been an ongoing topic of discussion. Um, aspirationally, we talked as a department about wanting to have embedded honors um, rather than having segregated honors um, going back for at least 10 years, um, definitely since we adopted the integrated math curriculum. Generally speaking, when students are grouped heterogeneously, it's beneficial for everyone, whereas when students are segregated by ability level, it benefits high achieving students, it does not uh, benefit in any way lower achieving students. Um, and so having honors and standard college prep students together together in classrooms was a way to simplify scheduling, which was the primary reason that we did it last year, but then our experiences with it were positive and we determined as a department that we wanted to move forward with it as a standard practice. I mean, separating out can close some doors, basically. Yep. Yeah. And considering that we live in a culture that already basically perpetuates the message that like there are people who are just magically math people, and so if math does not come easy for you, that means that you must not be a math person and therefore why persevere in learning it. We're constantly having to push back against that and help people understand that like with perseverance, anybody can learn math at the highest level. Some of us just need more structures and support than others. Yeah, and something that we really like about Embedded Honors is the mobility so that students can really easily decide um, to be in honors or not to be in honors, um, sort of the students choose. And sometimes, you know, sometimes students were choosing that, I think, based on um, sort of social pressures, you know, and not necessarily whether they were super interested in math or how they felt their math aptitude was necessarily. One of the things uh, Embedded Honors does, does is take away that social pressure because it doesn't matter if you're enrolled in honors or not, you're gonna have the same chance of being in the room with your friends. Um, there have also been concerns that were raised about how if students are um, of mixed ability levels are working together that there's a pressure put on higher achieving students to mentor lower achieving students. We that's that. not part of Embedded Honors. At no point have we claimed yeah. that that's supposed to be part of Embedded Honors. We're not suggesting that students should play the role of teachers. Y'all aren't trained to do that work, so we wouldn't ask you to do that work. As far as cons of embedded honors, I mean, 
really we're just feeling sort of like the community is yelling at us and that's kind of it like in in the classrooms it's better to teach we feel like um, the, the just the atmosphere of the of the classrooms is more pleasant there's more high level math yeah. discourse happening. I mean, There's, if I'm honest, like when yeah. I've taught, you know, the college prep classes, it can be a lot harder to get kids just talking about the math and really engaging in, in discourse. And we're finding that's there's less sort of arm pulling going on now in our classrooms. In a recent public records request, former committee member Susan Voss revealed 206 pages of emails and other communications from 2020 and 2021 between Principal Valancourt, the math department, and community stakeholders regarding embedded honors. We reached out to Ms. Valancourt, Ms. Sheridan, and Ms. Harrison, but they were unable to comment due to the investigation and issues regarding Valancourt's statements. In the 2021 Program of Studies Review, the school committee was presented the idea of implementing an embedded honors. The members of the school committee were not all behind this idea. We talked to Voss and other school committee members about their opinions on embedded honors and Ms. Valancourt's reaction. So as it was presented, having not really thought about it yet, a lot of questions came up, of course. I really felt like I needed to ask questions about how the embedded honors decision had come about, who had had a voice in it, and why the school committee had not been part of that discussion. I was really just struck by how did we get here with so quickly without any information. And as I reflected on it afterward, I felt like the answers to the questions were not always um, consistent with things I'd heard in the community. And I guess I just want to say, you know, to clarify my purpose of doing this public record request was really about the process and who had a voice and how we got here. And it wasn't about any specific teachers involved. And I, I just want to say, I think our teachers have done an amazing job, especially during the pandemic, and that they really care about our students. And that's what makes um, our community pretty darn special. After talking to Susan Voss about her experience with the embedded honors decision, we met with school committee member Dina Levi, who was on the committee at the time, and member Gwen Agna, a member of the curriculum subcommittee, for their insight on the decision process. I think Embedded Honors has a lot of potential. Um, and I had questions about whether we were prepared to really be able to implement it in a way that, that met the needs of all of our students, both the students who we were really hoping could, could be bolstered by Embedded Honors and the students who were already engaged as honors students and looking for that, that deeper experience and and um, more rigorous curricular experience. Well, at Jackson Street, we embedded um, all instruction into the classrooms because we don't don't have that kind of system in elementary schools. So I, I knew that it had great value. I also knew that the research showed that embedding honors in the middle and high school are also good trends in education. And I also know how much support and training and um, just the resources that are needed to make sure that it's done well. We did ask what the, what the, there are a few questions we asked. One was, was this supported by the entire math department? And was this something that students and caregivers were also in support of? And we were told yes to both of those questions but we weren't given specifics, unfortunately. Were we given examples of how this is in other schools? Yeah. No, we weren't. Uh, we weren't given examples of what this looks like in other schools. There wasn't, when it was presented to us, uh, much articulation about here's what the honors experience will be, here's what the non-honors experience will be, and here's what this looks like in other institutions that have done this. I am a part of what's called the curriculum subcommittee, and. Dina is also, and I'm looking forward to meeting with the math department at some point so that they can share with us more information about how it looks and what it means for the various populations and also where it's been tried and the kinds of results that other districts are seeing in this too. So I think there's an opportunity coming up for us to do that. I too am really excited to engage in a conversation with the math teachers to hear their perspectives. They're the experts. They're the ones that really know what math curriculum and teaching and pedagogy should look like at various levels. I know the word equity has been thrown around a lot 
But I do think it applies in this case that what the school system is trying to do is provide equitable opportunity for all students to have access to rigorous, challenging, high expectations work. Valancourt planned to expand the embedded honors system next year, but was met with even more resistance than expected. We talked to NHS students and teachers to ask them to share their opinions on embedded honors and how it has affected them. Since the initiation of Embedded Honors, I, I think that there's really been a positive vibe in the classroom. People have been willing to take honors for the first time ever. It's really been a positive experience. I think that there's been backlash to Embedded Honors because people were confused, if anything. We had the proposal, uh, our plan of study, approved a couple years ago, and I, and I think that there was just this question about what might change. Uh, and in my, my opinion, that more people are taking honors, more people are feeling comfortable in the math classroom. I think people are forgetting that the curriculum has changed. It's not just embedded honors. We have a better math program right now. It's more in, engaging. It's more, there's more enrichment to it. The juniors and seniors right now haven't really taken the courses that are being taught to the ninth and 10th graders right now. So I think that you're looking at one thing when perhaps you should be looking at how successful the change in the math pro uh, program has been. My experience with embedded honors has been good because you can sort of choose if you want to do honors or not once you're already in the class and you don't have to like pre-sign up for honors or regular. My personal experience with embedded honors has been kind of mid. Um, like. Sometimes I feel like maybe I'm not so far up on their intellect level, maybe a little bit, and uh, maybe I slow some of those kids down if I'm in a group with them. You know, it could be like a little troublesome, I think. My experience with Embedded Honors has overall just been really positive because I don't think I would have signed up for uh, Honors Maths if it like this option wasn't available to me. Like at the beginning of the year, like uh, I don't consider myself the best with math and. Like, I'm happy I ended up going with honors because I, I wouldn't have taken the class if the opportunity wasn't uh, available for me.